Welcome to learning how to play Crusader Kings 3 while playing. This whole series has one goal. I want to teach you how to play Crusader Kings 3, but I'm not gonna sit here and ramble at you for an hour or half an hour with all these little bits of information where I'm like, oh, you need to remember this when it happens. No, we're just gonna play. Starting from scratch with a new save, and I'm gonna explain all the choices I make and the reasoning behind them and the goals that they accomplish playing the game. There's gonna be some repetition there, which I believe is a great teacher. If you hear something more and more often, it starts sinking in. Now, I haven't played for a few months, maybe even half a year. So I might find situations where I'm like, oh, how did this work again? And I believe this is a good moment to start this series. I have a similar thing for Crusader Kings 2, go check it out if you like. But we are here for Crusader Kings 3 right now. I'm playing with all the DLC. You needn't. We are going to start a new game. And you can select the time period, select some predetermined rulers, uh, which they, they give you a bit of an idea of how difficult they might be to play. Personally, I like to start really early. And I like to start really lowly. So um, there are several levels of... Uh, well, rank is the correct word, I believe. You have a duke, you have a count, and the count is the lowest you can play. There are ranks beneath count, doesn't matter, you can only be a count. And we are going to click on this any ruler thing here or create your own. We only want to play as any ruler, and we are going to play Iron Man. Iron Man does two things. First, it enables you to get achievements. Second, you may not revert back to any point in time using save. Um, you can only use, you only have one save slot that is continually overwritten. So if something bad happens, well, it happens and you have to deal with it. Uh, we could click on the random character thing, which I personally I, I really enjoy. We're not going to go for uh, something of a tribal or something. We're gonna try for a uh, rulership type that, that is more common. So the random might lead us all to weird places. But this doesn't look too bad. The County of Aran, Count Smbat of Aran, age 37, and he does have an heir who is his son. Um, the religion and all that doesn't really matter much. We are right next to the Abbasid Empire, so it's not ideal, but it doesn't matter. Nothing in the Middle Ages was all that ideal. Um... So we have this one county, it looks like, and <laughs> well, we'll have to see how we how we deal with it all. Game rules, we click that, as I said, I want to play Iron Man. I'm not touching anything else here. It just stays like that, I just enable Iron Man. I'm not gonna create our own ruler, we're gonna pick him. He has a few things going on here, we'll talk about all that later. I don't like to min-max, I just pick what is there and we jump right in. So, without further ado, we're gonna start, and I want to save to the cloud because, well, who knows what happens. And immediately, we are now in the game. And something about Crusader Kings is the start can be kinda slow. So first things first for us, um, the little icons here on the side of our flag indicate that this is us. Other flags do not have the little side thingies, so we have a visual indicator of where we are. We are presented with a few options up here and a lot of information. I'm not saying anything here and I'm gonna be, oh, this is this, this is that, this is that. We come to the things as they pop up and as they become relevant. So first things first, what is the goal of Crusader Kings 3 or 2 for that matter? It is for you to survive. Not you personally, because you're gonna die of old age eventually. Maybe earlier, depending on how you live your life. So, the highest duty of the ruler is to ensure that his bloodline is maintained. And thus we shall attempt. We do have one child who is our heir, which is nice. Uh, but he might die. Now, something to note here is we're already quite powerful. This county that we have is actually three counties in a coat. <laughs> and if we have more heirs than this one, 
it will be split up upon our death and it will be divided between our heirs. This is for early Crusader Kings 3. There aren't really any options that prevent this at all. There are some ways to prevent it or mitigate the effects, but it doesn't really matter. It's worse to lose the game because you have no heir left in your bloodline that can inherit uh, than having your realm split a little bit. In the beginning, that is going to uh, happen a lot and it's not the worst thing you will see. So for now, we're going to go ahead and we find ourselves another spouse because we need a woman in our life to help us bear all those amazing children we want to have. So let's check. I'm not going to try and find it manually. The options that the game presents us with are going to be sufficient for what we want at the moment. But there are some things to look out for if you can. Early in the game, the selection is very, very slim because, well, people haven't been burned, people haven't, you know, reproduced all that much. So you see we don't have all that many young options, for example. Uh, at least not starting out here, so the 19-year-old is the youngest. I'm not entirely sure. It, it's sorted by relevance. Why? This one would give us an alliance with the barony of uh, this here. Now, Crusader Kings has a nice little uh, function where you can fix tooltips, so you can go into another tooltip. Uh, I have bound it to a middle mouse button press uh, in the options you can find how to set it up. And you can see like the, the little border, once I press that button, it, it gets thicker. So now I know this is fixed. Why am I going here? Why, why am I trying to figure out something about this? Well, I'm trying to figure out how strong that Baron is. Um, because a Baron is below a count, so he has a city. And cities or castles or what he might hold isn't necessarily the, the strongest thing. So he could field 128 troops compared to a 1,300, that is not a lot. So a, a alliance with him isn't really important. You can go for alliance power here and maybe find someone better. There are some counts here, but see, all these women are very, very young. So that's a problem for us because they become of childbearing age at around 16, I think. So, we want to see that we get someone close to that age, if not that age. Obviously, someone with a inheritable trait, you can tell by this. Uh, these icons here, these are not inheritable traits. But if they have this uh, square, the, these, uh, I'm not sure, it's a chevron shape. Um, this is a red one, this is a bed inheritable trait. And this one is a good one, because it's green. That's how you know anything in life, right? Uh, these are just kind of personality traits that someone develops throughout their life. We have some too. Um, no, that's not us, but we have some too. I, I promise you. <laughs> so let us found, uh, find our wife here. Um, the 15-year-old might be just the thing. You could go, if you, if you want to reduce the chance of having children, you could go for someone older in the late 20s, for example. So you reduce the childbearing years that they're going to spend with you, reducing the amount of potential heirs. But that can be an issue because they might not have a child at all with you. And if you're going for many children, because there, there might be women, which generally this early on can't inherit your stuff, these are all considerations they have to go into. So I like to pick someone halfway young, not too young, not too old um, at this point in time. But we'll uh, have to see. You can tell whether or not they're from a good house or not by... Uh, this is a lowborn. They don't have a sigil. They, they're just they're just a no one. Until they marry us, then they are a someone. So uh, we're going to go for this uh, young girl, Margarita D'Alessenos. And she is compassionate, calm, and content. So that's not the worst thing in the world. She is Greek. Which isn't ideal because I think we have a different background and religion. If, if we look at ourselves here, we are Armenian and Apostolic. So there's, there's, a, bit of a, there's a bit of a rift between us and our future wife. Uh, but he will accept this because we are so much higher in status. And the game even tells you how high the chance of children is. And in this case, it's high. So we will, we will go ahead and send a proposal. Which will be accepted. It tells you right now. 
you could send it even if it's not accepted. You can try and bribe and cajole, but it's... Go for the ones that already want it. All right, so now we've taken care of the first little pop-up up here. We haven't even started the game yet, but we're, we're, we're laying the groundwork. We need that. Next thing, we want to choose a lifestyle. Now, we already start out in stewardship. Once you have an entirely new character, say you, you, you die really early and you get a very young heir, uh, you might start from nothing here. But with a character like this one starting out, you likely have something where there's already 7 out of 27 perks. You needn't pick this one. You really needn't. But given how good he is in stewardship, the green one, and these are all corresponding colors, so blue is this, red is that, and so forth, uh, we gain a lot more experience going into the stewardship uh, tree rather than into any other. So we're not going to waste that advantage and we're going to pick this. Now, these are basically just talent trees. They have a focus here, which does not affect what you can pick here. These are just extra bonuses coming with the lifestyle uh, that you can have. So we can increase our monthly income at 10%, which isn't all that much early on. Um, we can add stewardship three, which also directly influences our income. So this might even be better because it has more influences. We can go ahead and uh, go for the due to focus, giving us enemy agent acceptance minus five, meaning people trying to be bought to enter into schemes against us are less likely to do so. Uh, our stewardship goes up by one and courtiers and our guests like us by 20 more. Now, this is important, not at this stage of rulership because, uh, well, our court isn't filled with our vassals in that sense because we really don't have all that many or none that could be a problem to us. So this could be interesting, but not right now. So we're going to go for the domain focus. I think we get the most out of that there. All right. Uh, we already have a bunch of things here. I'm not going to look at each of these. We're just going to live with what is there. However, it is sensible to get an idea of what they do anyway. Uh, we could do something against our liege, doesn't matter, we don't have a liege, uh, we can learn quicker, our vassals and lieges like us more, Chance yeah, councils like us better, that's good. Um, if we want to go independence, our vassals are gonna come, monthly tyranny goes down, okay, so th there's nothing that would push us directly in a certain direction of, of playing the game here. Um, so it's fine. It's, it's not ideal for having no liege lord, but... Well, all right. Now, let's make sure I'm actually saying the truth. And we don't have a liege lord because I don't actually know. Uh, we are de jour part of the Emirate of Shirvan. And we might actually be literally part of it. Um, the kingdom of Dailam doesn't exist. That's why it has this red border here. And to get there, I just clicked on, clicked on this here, basically where you get an idea of what's going on. You hover, and you can see on the map it's also highlighted the areas that are supposedly part of it. Now, um, this guy exists. So if we click on him here, him personally, we should see all his vassals somewhere. Right there. And we are not one of them. But he has a rightful claim on us. But he is also a lot weaker than us right now. He has... Um, he has more... What are they called right now? Retinue? No, they're not retinues anymore. That was the old. Men at arms. Okay, so... Well, actually, he doesn't have more than, them, than us. That's fine. So we overpower him quite well. This is good to know. So no threat from him. We are also not bordering direct... Well, actually, we do right here. We're bordering on the Abbasid. So, these might become an issue. The Abbasid might decide, oh, we want to eat uh, the county of Aran. Because why not? Now, you could surrender to that and everything, but there are some complications. We're not going to think about that yet until it actually happens. If we press tab, the tab key, you open this up here and you see all those messages. And it says you can declare declare some wars. We could declare on the Abbasid Empire, which absolutely makes sense because, you know, they just have 3,409 troops, which is quite weak for their size. But 
It's not a good idea. However, we can also declare war on this guy here. And we could go for a holy war for the entire kingdom. Which we can't afford right now. So we'll have to switch back. We could try for a holy war over duchy. Also can't afford that. We could go for that. Also can't afford that. So these are really not all that useful as options. So yes, while we technically can declare war, we absolutely cannot afford to do so. Uh, we can designate a guardian for our kid, which is important to shape their future. And we most assuredly want to shape their future. So, um, depending on where we want him to go, let's check him out. Because he gets the focus as well. And his education focus is martial, which isn't a bad idea to do. And we want someone who's good in martial things. So, we personally aren't all that great at it. But our steward and knight, he is quite good at it. He's shy and brave. He's a bit callous. Uh, so these are things that might influence a kid. He is not actually someone with a martial trait. He is uh, just like us. So we don't even have someone who's really, really good in martial things. So honestly, we're going to go ahead and teach our boy ourselves. Just to get a little bit more of an impact on what he does. Now, you, you, you can tell he also gets to have a spouse, not just us. I want to hide this for a moment. Press tab again. What we need is an alliance. We need someone to join us if there is a war against us or anything like it. Of course, we can try and find the big boys in the yard, uh, like the Byzantine Empire. We could, we could try and we just go ahead and, and say we would like to arrange a marriage. Uh, not between us, obviously, but we're gonna look for our boy, who should be here somewhere. There he is. And yes, we would like to marry the princess of, uh, of the Byzantine Empire to our boy, which would give us an alliance, if he were to agree, but he doesn't like that. She's marrying down, clearly. The Baselius uh, doesn't like our boy all that much. Uh, he doesn't like us, even less than our boy. Uh, our faith is different, not too much, but enough. And uh, he loves his daughter dearly, so he's he's not he's not going to give it to the likes of us. So this would be a fantastic uh, alliance for us, but not for them. So let's look around. Who who's a little bit closer to home? Who might be closer to us? So the Principality of Tao Clarjeci or whatever it is, and the Principality of Abkhazia. These are pretty good options for us. Why? Because they are similar in strength, so we are going to be a very solid alliance for them, and they for us also. So let's see. Um, a Principality... I'm not entirely sure. I think a Principality is just for this religious group the same as any duchy level title. So the, the mid-tier, well, there are four tiers. There's the county, there's the duchy, there is the kingdom, and then there's the empire. So there's four tiers, but if we ignore the empire for the moment, then this is a mid-tier title. Yes, he has the duchy title, and that leads to the principality, because he's an orthodox Georgian. Is he closer? Oh, very good. He's Armenian. So he is probably more likely, but he doesn't have a have a daughter. Does he? No. No. <laughs> so, okay, again, we go back to what the game suggests us because it's not it's not mean to us. It's it's trying to help here. So let's go for alliance power, and now we can look at younger uh, women too. He's seven, so that's fine. Anything two years or something younger is perfectly fine. So we might find something here. Lots of Greeks. We could uh, try and filter this down a little bit and, and go for, let's say, uh, culture Armenians. So now we only see the Armenian ladies uh, only. Um, we have an albino lady here who's 24. Oh, God. Uh, let's go for age difference. Uh, we go for maximum of five. So we, we have a courtier. Uh, that is within his age range, and she is Armenian, so we could do that, but it doesn't really help us. Um, 
So let's go higher. 10 doesn't make it any better. Let's go for Byzantine heritage. So we broaden our circle a little bit. And we keep with the lion's power. So the county of Demetrius is likely our best bet. She's not great. She's not bad. She's just average. And this man will accept. He has 611 troops. It's not terrible. It's not terrible. I don't know exactly where it is. So um, let's try and see. It. It's there. So he is going to take a while to get to us. And uh, likewise the other way around. But that doesn't matter all that much. Because anyone looking at us from the outside might think. Oh boy. He's uh, quite a lot stronger than I figured. Now. This is almost all we can do at this point in the game. We do have a little bit of gold, which we could try and spend on things, but things are way too expensive to start out with. You definitely want to upgrade your stuff. That's not a question. Uh, but first of all, you need to figure out what and where the stuff should go. And th this is a pretty good one. We have four slots. I would like to have five or more, but these are rare counties to have. Like maybe this one. No. Any of these? Nope, nothing. <laughs> um, so next thing is to expand. Likely. See what we can do to grow even stronger. We can't declare a war on this man. Uh, he's a good apostolic Armenian. Why would we, right? Can't declare... Well... Nope, can't declare a war on this man. But he's less like us. So he's more likely to be a target. So the last thing we're going to do before we really start on pausing this game is we are going to go have a quick look at this side panel here and we want our uh, council, which is here. And I always click the wrong things. The council starts out pre-picked. You, you really needn't do much here. These are likely the best boys you're going to get for the job. Um, and I'm wondering right now why I didn't find this man to teach my son. Mm, let's see. I will offer him a ward. Namely, our boy. And he will definitely take care of our boy. So now we needn't do it anymore. He, he takes care of him now. And he has a chance at going in a military direction. So that's good. Very good. Okay. Uh, but what we definitely want to do here right now is the following thing. We want to take our bishop, our religious leader, and we want him to go create a claim for us that we can then press in a war. Because in Crusader Kings, you can't just go villainily declaring wars. You see, I right-click, this isn't here, because I don't have a reason, a casus belli, which is Latin for belly reason. No, actually, belly is war. So there's no reason for a war right now. So we cannot even start it, which is good, because same works the other way around. Now, Obviously, we are right next to a bunch of Muslim mega countries who very much would like to holy war us out of existence. So we need to do everything we can to grow before that ever happens. So let's get this back. You can press F4. The shortcuts are also set down here in the little uh, tooltip again. And send him over to here to produce us a claim. Why here? Why not anywhere else? Because, well, attacking the Abbasid Empire is nonsensical. This boy here is Armenian, so uh, we'll see. This is just one county. We can take that with one war, ideally. But next, we're going to set our sights on this boy. Holy Wars are dangerous, because Holy Wars allow the attacked to be joined by others of the same faith. And there's a lot more Muslims here than there are Armenian people. Now, obviously, the Byzantine Empire might, might come to our aid and help, but I don't think so. Something we could do to uh, improve our chances a little bit is we could go ahead and take our chancellor and send him on a foreign affair mission, which he's already doing. So there's a chance of good things happening. Down there, possible side effects, that's terrible. He has a skill of four and he's basically only going to do bad things for us. An enemy might get a claim. Uh, yeah, it's not good. So let's see if we can't find someone better. He is a strong vassal, a powerful vassal, so he's going to be unhappy if we fire him from the council. But, again, he's such a weak boy, he's not going to threaten us at all. It's fine. He can go. So we're going to take our friend Abirad 
and put him here. Now, again, depending on where you start, who you are, you might have an entirely different list here. This is not what you always get. But you always want to make the best out of what you get. So, see, he's going to hate us for being fired. And he wants that seat. So, he's going to have a minus 60 opinion of us. You'll see in a moment, plus 39 is now minus 51. But this boy, he loves us. And now look at this. On the positives effect anymore. Uh, I think you need a level 15 here to get to the only positive effect things. If you have a mix, you have maybe positive, maybe negative. So these nine boys, you know, he, he gets maybe positive, more potential negative. So the higher the skill, the better it is. You can't switch out all of them. Depending on your religion, you might not be able to appoint your own religious leaders. But everyone else, you can have a look here. Now, we could take this boy back and make him our um, our spy master. He would like us for that, but for being fired, he really doesn't like us all that much, so he's likely he's going to cut our throat. What we could do, however, we, we fire this man, who's also a strong vassal, um, and put him in, the young man who has a 14 in intrigue. So let's let's do that. We want a competent spy master, not, you know, whatever that other thing was. So this is already a little bit better. A little bit. Everything else is fine. We're not building anything. So he stays on taxes. And we don't need to promote our culture in any way. Our troops here. Well. Huh, we, we could go for more commanders. That's a good idea. The levy size and reinforcement rate at plus 20%. That's pretty good. So we're going to stay there because we need the numbers. We need to be big and threatening. Now I'm going to unpause and all the things we just put into motion are going to start popping up. So um, this guy is happy to educate our boy. This guy wants the betrothal that we offered. This guy wants the other betrothal we offered. So now we have our alliance with Demetrius over yonder. And with that barony, that doesn't matter all that much. Well, now we have a bunch of friends, which we didn't have before. So, th there are going to be a bunch of things that happens. The game speed is here. You can upgrade or downgrade this with the plus or minus key on your keyboard. Um, or just by clicking here in whichever field you want. I strongly advise against going to speed 5. That is rarely sensible because things start happening so quickly. Uh, you're going to get overwhelmed. You're going to miss important things. But 3 to 4 is a comfortable speed. You can go 4, especially early, because you don't have a lot of resources at your disposal, so you can't do much. The growth is not very high. Keep in mind, going to war is costly. Not in having it only, but also in maintaining your troops. This, this is going to be a money question. There are a lot of buttons here you can tinker with, but right now you really need this. It shows you your progression on your domain focus, so until you get the next talent point to spend, basically. And here we got our stress level, which is currently at zero. It has three tiers. Each tier makes worse things potentially happen to you. Now, again, goal for now, just survive. Try and stay alive, try and not die. If something bigger comes, tries to eat us up, we're going to try and deal with it then. If something smaller offers itself up for us to swallow it, we are going to uh, deal with it then as well. Something we definitely want to achieve, and that is, I think, the last thing we're going to check out for today. We want a higher title. We want to be a duke because if we only control enough territory for one duchy title to exist, on succession, the splitting of our realm doesn't matter because our brothers... Well, if, if our heir had brothers and the realm would be split between him and his brothers, then we die, we become him. Now our boy is our brothers because we are no longer him. We're now him. I know it's a little bit confusing, but it'll make all sense. Now his brothers only get counties within the duchy. So he still rules over all of them. So there's no loss of land. But a duchy title has some requirements for us to get to. And we'll check this out. Um... 
unpopular favorite. These are events that just keep popping up. You have some options to deal with them. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. In this case, all of them are kind of bad. So let's see. I'm still smiling at a joke my Chancellor Abedard made at his morning's council session when Major Mummy Gun catches my arm. Leash, I've been meaning to talk to you. I know you feel... Much affection for him, but really, a place on the council. So this boy, we took him on the council because we're like, yeah, we like this boy. And this boy's like, my friend, really, he's not council material. So now we have to go ahead and do something here. Um, we could say, a count may pick his own council, which leads to all of these things. Uh, we get a rivalry, potentially, with the mayor. Uh, all of our powerful vassals are going to have an even worse opinion of us for the next five years. We gain some stress because we are actually humble. So this goes against our beliefs here. Um, and the mayor hates us more. I could go, me thinks you want this job, Mami Gon. And we could put him in instead to become counselor. Now, this would stress us out because we are also just. And because it's just stressful. We would get a weak hook uh, for doing him a favor. Um, or we could just fire the counselor, be even more stressed out. <laughs> so, as I said, sometimes all of these options are kind of terrible. For now, a count may pick his own counsel, I tell you. Why do I choose this? Well, again, this, the strong vassals we have at the moment aren't a danger to us. They really aren't. Um, so it doesn't matter if they're upset or not. Yes, they might still try and kill us with a scheme or whatever, but those take a while and, well, we do have an heir, so what does it really matter? So it was the least worst option. Now, back to finding out the duchy thing. We want to see what duchy title would be the next one we have. So we check out all these counties we have um, and see what they are de jure part of. So this thing is de jure part of um, the kingdom of Armenia, which is a little bit too high, honestly. I only want to see the duchy title, not the kingdom title. Let's try this again. Ah, yes, the, the principality of... Metz Hike, which already exists and belongs to someone, so we can't go that route. Let's find more duchy titles in our area. So this one, the Duchy of Georgia, that might actually be the one we want to go for. So to get that, we need to hold three de jure counties of that area. Um, we currently hold one, which is this one, so we would need to take this and this. Uh, we are currently working on getting this. We're not going to get any of that, because, well, it's in the Abbasid Empire. That's a problem. Now, we do have one more county title, which probably belongs over here. Uh, looking at how it stands, and yes, indeed, it belongs over there. So, we are not ideally equipped in getting a duchy title at the moment. We, we are really spread all over the place, doesn't make sense. Uh, there's nothing we can do. We're not, we're not going to get one in, in a very straightforward conquest kind of way. But there are always more ways in Crusader Kings 3 and Crusader Kings 2 to accomplish your goals than just the most obvious swinging your sword until things go the way you're trying to get them to go. Now, and with this, I think we're going to leave it at that. It's already quite a bit of a video. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will continue this and see you around next time. Hope you got an idea of what to do next time. I hope we get a few bad events so you learn not to panic. Until then, bye-bye.